Welcome to Our Girl Relationships. On this channel, we talk about problems people face in their day-to-day -day lives. Let's start with the video. When I was around 10 years old, my dad left. He just left. It wasn't something I ever expected, obviously. Every child believes their parents will stick around. But I really didn't expect it. He was the ideal dad in my eyes. He balanced two jobs and then some. He fought off his exhaustion every night to read me stories of princesses and brave knights. He would buy me stuffed animals for special occasions or even just because. He'd place them around the house for me to find. I was so proud of my growing collection, each holding a special place in my heart. I had a fondness for bunnies. He was there for as many school events he could attend, cheering the loudest even from the back. My mom wasn't as affectionate and was on the more serious side. Didn't bother me much. I figured that was just the way she was. My dad was the more playful of the two. My family, to my knowledge, was normal. My parents loved each other, we lived comfortably, and all was well. And then, one day, he left. I remember the day so vividly. I guess when you replay it so often, you memorize it. It was already dark out and my dad was reading a story to me. I was starting to get sleepy, so he set the book aside and flicked off my bedside lamp. I remember him kissing my forehead while bidding me a good night, saying that he loves me, that he'll see me in the morning, and after he adjusted the blanket around me, he left. I fell asleep peacefully at the words, but when I woke up the next morning, he wasn't there. I figured I'd see him after school, but he was still gone. I tried asking my mom where he was, but she ignored me. I felt very confused and scared until eventually she finally told me what had happened. He had left us. He had abandoned us. He didn't love us anymore. The words didn't quite register at first, but when they did, they hit me hard. The dad I thought of as my hero, the same person who would crack a joke to get me to stop crying, was gone. According to my mom, he had left on a walk and simply decided not to come back. I didn't understand, and I kept asking my mom why, over and over. But she only walked away and locked herself in her room. There weren't any jokes anymore, no smiles in the house. It was always gloomy. My mom isolated herself for days, and I had to care for myself. It was just for a little bit until she could get back on her feet. But that never happened. Even after she finally left her room, she was detached from everything. Nothing was ever the same. Since my mom was working, she expected me to look after everything in the house. This meant cleaning, cooking, laundry, and so on. I had done chores before, but never to this extreme. I was now in charge of taking care of myself. She would leave me home alone for entire nights, never bothering to check if I had eaten or needed help with my schoolwork. I braided my own hair and tucked myself in each night without her. If I attempted to get out of doing chores, she would say that my dad left because of me. Sometimes she threatened to leave too, so I just kept my head down and marched onwards. She threw out everything that my dad had bought for us, including my beloved stuffed animals. When I protested, went to rescue them, she screamed in my face, It's your fault he left. I never did recover from that. I tried to focus on getting good grades and I learned how to take care of myself. After all, there was no one I could depend on anymore. My mom eventually would bring men home to keep her company. I hid away, since I was only a reminder to her that I was a burden. We rarely spoke and never acknowledged each other. She had her own life and I had mine. I resented my dad, hated him to the core for leaving us, for destroying our once happy family. He ruined our lives without care, for no reason. I thought he was a coward. The years passed quickly, or slowly, depending on the day, and soon I turned 18. I had come back from school, and as I went further into the house, there he was. My dad, sitting on the couch, 
tears in his eyes, and a bunny-stuffed animal in his hands. There was a long silence. Neither of us knew what to say. When he started to speak, something about explaining himself and how grown up I was, I interrupted him. I started yelling at him, screaming to get out that I hated him, that he left me, he ruined our lives and kept screaming and screaming until I had to stop because I was crying so much. He remained quiet the whole time, letting me get it all out of my system before getting up to quietly speak. He looked like he wanted to hug me, but he held back. He pleaded with me to give him a chance to explain and held out a post-it note with a number on it. I accepted it, only to crumple it up and throw it away, telling him to get out. He did, without another word. I stood there crying for a while before realizing that he had left behind the stuffed animal. I reluctantly collected it and the crumpled note before locking myself in my room. I smoothed out the note while staring at the phone number, hugging the bunny in one arm. I've been staring at this note for hours now, curled up in bed. I don't know what to do. Do I give him a chance or not? It's been a couple of weeks since I last wrote and a couple of things have happened. I did end up calling my dad. It was weird at first and I cracked an awkward, thought you'd have milk instead of a bunny joke. But we eventually eased into a normal conversation. We agreed to meet at a coffee place nearby in a few days, so that's what we did. It was again awkward, but not terrible. He bought us both some hot chocolate, which, funnily enough, we both enjoy with some cinnamon, and we sat down. He started her off by apologizing profusely, saying nothing can excuse what he did, and if I want nothing to do with him, he'd respect that. He just wanted a chance to apologize and explain what had happened, as well as reconnect with me if that's what I wanted to. He then went on to explain why he'd left. In his perspective, we weren't the happy family I thought we were. He and my mom would constantly fight. She would always put him down, spend money unnecessarily, blame everything on him, and so on. He had been rushed into the marriage by her, and when she got pregnant with me, he felt obliged to stay. It was a living nightmare, and it reached a point where he fell into a dangerously deep depression. So, he left. He got help, got stronger, and eventually he fell in love again with an old childhood friend he had lost touch with. He tried to reach out to me through my mom, but she just wouldn't allow it. He said that this doesn't excuse him for leaving me behind, but he hopes that I'll give him a chance when or if I'm ready. It's been really confusing. Honestly, I'm still unable to forgive him for leaving. After hearing the whole story, though, I understand much more than before. I feel such anger towards my mom. She was the one who broke our family, not my dad. He did leave us, and it hurt me, but I understand now. And I still remember the wonderful person he was, despite everything he was secretly going through. So maybe it's worth giving him a careful chance. So, it's been a year since I last updated this. Time flies. It's been a whirlwind of events, but I'll try to keep it simple. After I met with my dad at the coffee place, he invited me to visit his place sometime. I thought about it for a few days before agreeing. I met his girlfriend, let's call her S., who lives with him, and she is the bubbliest person I've ever met. She was very excited to meet me and was very sweet. They also have a dog called Pongo, who I adore. It was a surprisingly fun visit, and we arranged for me to visit again. After my second visit to his place, my mom found out and I had been in contact with my dad again. I'm not sure how, but it turned into a huge fight and she kicked me out. My dad picked me up after I called him and he offered me to move in with them. I said yes. We gathered my things the day after and I've been living with them ever since. It's been a tad awkward, of course, learning to have a dad again, but it's been good. Really good. There are still wounds that are healing, but he is patient with me. I was hesitant to trust him in the beginning, but with time, I let my guard begin to come down. I've also started going to therapy, and my dad and S are beyond supportive. 
My mom blew up my phone a couple of times with awful statements and even called the cops on my dad once. But after a quick explanation and seeing that I was okay, they quickly left. I blocked her number. After everything she had done, I wanted nothing to do with her again. I graduated from high school and my dad and S were there cheering for me all the way through. Honestly, I don't think I've ever smiled more widely than that moment. They took millions of photos and my dad had one framed. It now resides proudly in the living room for all to see. He also got me a mega-sized bunny, stuffed animal, whom I religiously sleep with every night. It's not all perfect, though. I still have my bad days. I get depressed, angry, or think that I'll be left behind again. It's not sunshine and rainbows through and through. But they are always there for me, and they're not going to leave. I'm sure many will criticize me for giving my dad another chance after leaving me behind, and that's okay. It's my choice to make. You're definitely allowed to give your dad a chance. It's your life and your decision. Only you know what's best for you. Personally, I never would have been able to forgive my father. I would have cut both parents off and depended wholly on myself. Leaving your child with someone you know is awful is unforgivable in my eyes. But hey, that's just me. Next story. I'm a 27-year-old woman. During the height of the pandemic, I suffered a stillbirth but 19 weeks and 6 days. At the time, I was living states away from my family in Idaho. I was single and planned to raise the child alone. The father didn't want anything to do with the child. I was absolutely content with that as my child was the result of failed birth control, expelled IUD, excited to raise a child on my own and developing an attachment to my active baby moving. I was shattered by the news that my baby no longer had a heartbeat and I had to deliver a non-living fetus. Due to the hospital staffing shortage and not enough beds, I was sent home hours after delivering. Therefore, with no time to take pictures, I held my child for maybe 45 minutes before he was taken away. This experience was unbearably traumatic and I do not wish this upon anyone. I chose not to determine the cause of death through an autopsy because of the cost. My insurance didn't cover it and I couldn't afford it. After breaking the news of my loss to my family, their reactions were far from supportive and downright disgusting. My aunt cornered me in a bathroom at a family gathering and told me, you're a terrible person for putting us all through this. I know you faked the pregnancy for attention. You can't fool me. You need to apologize to everyone publicly or I'll tell them myself. Taken aback by this unhinged response, I told my mother and she sided with her sister, stating, You didn't bring a child home. You don't have any pictures of the baby and we don't lose babies in this family. Clearly, you're hiding something. Most other reactions were similar to my cousins and my sisters. Absolutely devastated by these comments, I decided to prove everything via birth and death certificate, dated pregnancy tests, medical documents, and my ultrasounds. This was not enough for my aunt. As she said to me, anyone can fake and print that information off the internet. It's easy. My mother reluctantly agreed. After grieving, and receiving support from my dad's side of the family, I met my fiancé, James, 28, and shortly after, we bought a house together. We decided to stop all birth control and condoms, not trying, but at the same time not preventing. Now, we are expecting our little rainbow in August, and we couldn't be any happier. However, due to the hell my family put me through, we decided we are going to wait until the baby is born to announce the pregnancy. Because if something were to happen, I don't want to go through the emotional trauma my family caused me again. Am I the a-hole for keeping my pregnancy a secret? Nope. NTA. Your first duty is now to your baby and yourself and your partner. The rest can pound sand for insulting you so horribly. I would go LCNC with anyone who did not trust and support you. And feel free to include something on the announcement that your second child has been born and you're certain your newborn's big sister is celebrating with you from heaven, or something like that. Don't let them sweep it under the rug. 
If you don't go NC, bring up this issue and beat it like a rented mule until you get an apology or you're ready for NC. For example, your mother wants your help with something. Tell her you're sure she made a mistake asking you. By her own words, a liar. And that she should get someone she trusts to help her. Next story. Hi, I'm a 24-year-old woman. And I've always supported both my parents, even though they are separated. My mother has had a boyfriend for about two years now. My boyfriend's dream is to have children of his own, something my mother cannot do. Not only does she have her tubes tied, but she has a lot of health problems. The deal was that they were going to break up, but they seemed to always extend their breakup date. My mother had a talk with him about their breakup, and suddenly he wants to do anything possible to have a baby with her, including IVF. I thought that my mom would get a consultation and she would get rejected just from her bad health. Somehow, a doctor convinced my mom it's possible. My father and her are on somewhat good terms, and she asked him for $15,000 for a life-saving surgery. This is somewhat true because she does need two surgeries for her current health problems. My father talked to me and asked if I really thought that she was being truthful, since we all know about the baby thing. I told him I don't think that she would lie about something like that. My mother then came over and told me her plan of how to pay for IVF and how she would ask my dad for money. She told me this on Saturday. On Sunday, I met my dad again. He told me how worried he was about my mom and how he had the 15000 cash ready for her. I tried convincing my mother to tell him the truth and to not do things like this. She got defensive and showed no signs of fessing up, so I sat my father down and told him. Since then, she told me how awful my father was to her and how she deserves to be happy. She was never cared for or loved, and she feels that he should pay for it. My father has done horrible things like cheating, but since they broke up, he's helped her a lot financially. I do not condone my father's actions, but something in my heart told me that this is wrong. My number one fear was her health. I decided to dis distance myself from her until she breaks up with her boyfriend. I told her I would still be there for her for anything. I still send her pictures of my granddaughter every other day and keep her updated. She is now saying how I don't care about her happiness and my ultimatum is too harsh. However, her relationship with her boyfriend has actually affected my little family in the past. We were all supposed to move in together after they broke up. He decided to stay last minute and I had to let go of an apartment. Let's just say I'm not comfortable with him being around my daughter. Since the whole baby thing began, he has made sexist comments about female babies. I think I may be the a-hole, but she has a timer on her. She's 45, and at 46, they don't use her eggs for IVF anymore. I'm not really sure. That's what she said. Anyway, she is turning 46 this month, and I may have ruined her only chance of ever conceiving a baby. I ruined her only chance of ever having a baby? But weren't you a baby? Do you not count? Don't put that on yourself. She's not desperate to have a baby. She's desperate to keep this man. A man that doesn't care one bit whether or not this is good for her health or not. Also, she lied to your dad to get 15000 15000 That's fraud. You are NTA in this situation. You did good, kid.